You know, there's so many great things about bike lanes, but one of the great parts about it is that I like just living my life at the speed of a bike. Uh, sometimes you have to live at the speed of a car and racing from here to there, but if you get there at the speed of a bike and you have a bike lane that's dedicated there, you can really have an amazingly uh, great experience, even if you're in a big rush. Minnesota has a national reputation as one of the best states in the country for biking. Part of this acclaim includes hundreds of miles of on-street bike lanes. These bike lanes are part of a philosophy of transportation planning and construction called complete streets, which means that streets are accessible to all users, regardless of age, ability, or mode of transportation. The reason why bike lanes and other bike facilities are really important to our state of Minnesota is that we need to make sure that our transportation system is accessible for all users. We talked with pedestrians, cyclists and motorists in Minnesota in order to identify some common misconceptions about bike lanes. Our first question was, if there is a bike lane present, are bikes required to use it? I think so. No. I would assume so. Yes, I think they should. Although having cyclists in bike lanes is safer for everyone, cyclists are not required to use these facilities. They are allowed to ride outside bike lanes to make turns or avoid debris within the bike lane, and they have the option of using an adjacent trail where available. However, a bike lane will usually provide the smoothest, safest and most efficient method of transportation for cyclists. It also creates a safer environment for pedestrians. Bike lanes serve as a welcome mat on our roadways for people that bike. It also creates a definition of where bicycles can ride on the roadway with some protections. Our next question was, when are vehicles allowed to cross the white line and enter a bike lane? They shouldn't be going around somebody in a bike lane. They should wait till somebody makes a left turn and then go stay in their lane. They ain't supposed to go in a bike lane. Um, only when there's another car parked to the side. Good question. No idea. I think where it's got sort of perforations where it's not a solid line. I think then they can uh, go in there to turn. Bike lane pavement lines can appear as both solid and dashed lines. In either case, a vehicle should only cross the line when they are parking or turning into a driveway or street. Vehicles should treat bike lanes like any other lane of traffic and yield to approaching bicyclists. Well, I think the, the common misconception of a driver is that they can't drive in them. Um, I think that's really, really important message to get out that motor vehicles should turn across a bike lane and signal their turns like they're turning across any other lane of traffic and use the bike lane if that's on the side of the road that they're turning. The other is that bicyclists don't understand that motor vehicles are supposed to do that and they yell at the cars for driving in the bike lane or turning across the bike lane. Are bicycles also considered vehicles? Um, yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't be, I don't, I don't know actually, I, I suppose not. Yes, bicycles are defined as vehicles by Minnesota law and are required to obey the same rules of the road as motorists. Um, a bicycle is a vehicle and has the rights and responsibilities of all other vehicles on the road. That includes stopping at stop signs, obeying to all other traffic control devices and signs, signaling your turns, and being predictable. As more and more people are bicycling these days, I think motorists are getting more accustomed to seeing them on the street and more accepting of the fact that they're there and need to be looked out for. There's a certain safety in numbers when it comes to cycling. And vice versa, I think cyclists need to really follow the rules of the road. And I think there are frustrations on both sides when people see the others not doing what they're supposed to do. A recent federal bike lane project provided 75 miles of new bike lanes in four different communities, including Minneapolis. After three years, the study found that biking in these areas increased by 50%. There were 7,700 fewer tons of carbon dioxide emitted and 1.2 million fewer gallons of gas burned. With all the conversations we rightfully have about pollution, there's nothing that impacts our air quality more than cars. And cars are here, I love my car. But the fact of the matter is, every time somebody gets on a bike instead of a car, our air gets a little better, and so we should thank them. The Federal Bike Lane Project 
also reported an estimated reduction of $20 million in health care costs. It's very important that we take this seriously and create a community where the healthy choice is the easy choice and that people can bike and walk safely in the state of Minnesota. The state of Minnesota works with counties, cities and many other local agencies to create a safe and convenient transportation system using the latest Complete Streets policies. This approach enables safe access for all users, including pedestrians, bicyclists, motorists and transit riders of all ages and abilities. Bike lanes are part of our commitment to enhancing Minnesota's quality of life, community health and environmental vitality. Creating a transportation system that's safe for all users is something that will make Minnesota strong.